Hey guys, welcome back. So this is going to be a pretty short video and it's going to focus on creating a Python script that other people can actually use. So more specifically, you've probably been learning Python for a while, maybe you just started, but either way, eventually you're going to want to create some pretty complex, pretty cool pieces of code that other people out there can download and run without any real problems. So I want to show you what could happen that's problematic, which would be a barrier for people who are trying to download and run your code. Let's say you have a complex piece of Python code, which starts with something like import pandas, which is a library for data frame analysis, import folium, which is a library for creating nice maps, and from Google Cloud, import vision. So this is dealing with the Google Vision API. Just for example, you might have many, many more and many, many different types of libraries that you used, which is fine. That's what Python is good for, having lots of open source libraries. But here's where the trouble starts happening. Let's say now you put this code online, in some file called application.py on GitHub, for example, and I'm able to go online and download your file. So far, okay. Now here is what will happen if I try to run your file on my computer, most likely. I'm gonna get first an error saying, no such module pandas, because it's pretty likely that I don't have pandas installed. Okay, so I'll do pip install pandas, and I'll wait a while and I'll get pandas. So I'll try to rerun your code. Now I'll get no such module folium because I probably don't have Folium installed. All right, a little bit annoying. I have to now do pip install Folium. So then I'll run your code again and I'll get no such module Google Cloud. So I'll get even more annoyed and I'll do pip install Google Cloud and so on and so on and so on. Basically all the specific modules that you use that make your code work are likely not installed on my machine because they were so specific to your code, which means that I have to go through this annoying back and forth dance of learning I don't have a module I need, downloading it, learning I don't have another module, downloading it and so on. So really the experience would be much better if you told me ahead of time exactly which modules I would want to use. So let's jump over to the code now and see how you might do that. So here I have an Anaconda prompt. And as we said before, the crux of the problem is that you should tell me beforehand which modules, exactly which modules I need in order to run your complex application. Turns out it's pretty easy to get a list of all the libraries that are currently installed in your environment. You simply do, and this is again in Anaconda prompt, you would do pip, freeze and then you would have this arrow basically saying I want to put the result of pip freeze into requirements.txt. So basically when I execute this command what happens is I freeze all of the dependencies I currently have in my working environment and that gets put into a file called requirements.txt. So if I were to do this pip freeze requirements.txt which is what I just did and then I open up that file we see that it looks like this. It looks like there's a ton of libraries in here. And it's true that whatever libraries I need in order to get this to work, such as we see Folium here, we would see Pandas if I scrolled further down, here's some stuff about Google Vision Client, and so on. The other problem now we've created is that I've also included every single other library that I've ever installed on my machine for any other project I've worked on. For example, here's some unnecessary libraries for the current project, such as Dash or any other libraries in here. So basically we have solved the problem in the sense that if someone were to install all of these requirements onto their machine, they would be good to go. But we haven't solved the problem that now we're basically giving them way too many libraries to install, which is equally as bad of a problem. So how do we get exactly the requirements we're looking for? Well, what we would really want to do is kind of simulate having a machine from scratch, which would be simulating the user's machine when they first download your Python file. And if we were able to simulate a machine from scratch, we, the developer of the application, could basically just pip install exactly the libraries that are needed for this application, create a requirements.txt file from that, and just give the users that file. Turns out we can use Anaconda to do exactly such a thing. So now I'm back in Anaconda here, and how you would create this, what we're talking about as a new environment, would be using the conda commands. So first we would do conda create dash dash name, and we would put basically test env, so that's the name of the environment I'm creating. And then you put the word Python because I want this to be a Python environment. So now it's gonna think for a second, it's gonna ask me if I wanna proceed and install just the basic libraries that are needed to get this working in a Python environment. I'll say yes, and then in a very short amount of time, I'll have a new conda environment created. Okay, now that I've created this conda environment, as we see here, to activate it, I simply do conda activate and the name of the environment. So it's test env. So at this point, you know I'm in the new environment because instead of base before my string here, it says test env, which means I'm now in this test environment. 
I can further convince myself of that because if I were to say uh, Python here, so now I'm in Python, and I were to import something that I clearly had before, like pandas, now it's saying no module named pandas. So indeed, what I've basically successfully done here is created a fresh new environment, basically simulating what a new user would be experiencing if they downloaded my application for the first time. So here, now I can do things like pip install pandas. And I'll speed this up for you guys. But you'll see that basically what's happening is that the pandas module is getting installed for the first time in this new fresh environment that I've just created. OK, so now that we successfully installed pandas, we can go ahead and pip install folio. I won't actually do it here because it'll take a while. But we can basically pip install any of the other dependencies that our application needs. And we, as the developer of the application, only have to do that once. Let's assume that I've pip installed everything that needs to get pip installed for our current application to work. Now, if I were to do pip freeze, so this is the same exact command from before, and I'll put that into requirements.txt, make sure my spelling is right, and I go ahead and hit enter there. Now, if I hop back over to the Jupyter Notebook, and I go ahead, scroll down, I did all these steps, and then I go ahead and say what's in my requirements.txt file now, we see it's much cleaner. Instead of this mass of dependencies that the user would have had to annoyingly install onto their machine, now we have just the dependencies that are needed to run our application. We see that most of these were there from before. We see that the new stuff that got installed was pandas and numpy and six and everything that came along when I did pip install pandas. And similarly, if you did pip install folium or Google Cloud Vision or any other libraries, those would all appear here. But more importantly, those are the only ones that would appear here. So the user doesn't get anything extra and they're not missing out on anything. Using this conda environments technique, they get exactly what they want. And basically what people do is they put this requirements.txt file in the same GitHub repository as their application. So here's a GitHub project I'm currently working on around natural language processing. And you see that we have this requirements.txt file in here. And this basically just outlines exactly the the modules that are needed in order to run this natural language processing project. No more, no less. So this is how people do it in practice. And just to close the story out, uh, let's say you are a new user and you download this Python file and you download the requirements.txt. How do you dynamically install all the requirements from this txt file? Turns out via a very simple Python command. So I'm going to do conda deactivate in order to leave the test environment, which you can see now it says base. I'm going to create a brand new other environment. So let me scroll up here and grab the create command. And I'll create an environment called user environment. So now I'm going to activate the user environment. I'm going to do conda activate user env. So this is simulating a brand new user uh, downloading my application. And we can prove again this is a brand new user by going into Python, trying to do something like import pandas, which doesn't exist because this is a brand new environment slash brand new user. So since there is a requirements.txt file in this directory, all the user would have to do is pip install dash r requirements.txt. And as soon as they run that, it's basically going to walk through all of the requirements that are on each line of the requirements.txt file and download them brand new into this user's environment. So they don't have to think about doing it one by one. They simply just run that command once and sit there and wait one time for all the requirements to get installed, not having to do that annoying back and forth dance of you don't have this, go install this. Now you don't have this, go install that. This is a much cleaner much more sane way to achieve this goal. So I'm going to speed this up for you guys. OK, so that seems to have finished. Now, again, in this user environment, I can go to Python. I can try to import pandas. And we see that now it is successful. So basically, we have successfully installed pandas onto this user's machine without ever actually telling them that that's what they need, because everything they needed was conveniently packaged in this requirements.txt file. So this is how people deal with modules in Python in the real world when you're trying to share code among people who are out there on the internet. If you have any questions at all on this process, please leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you next time.